So starting with our first speaker, Jay Kumar. Uh, Jay Kumar works as the assistant professor at Presidency University in Bangalore, India. Um, he's currently serving as the IBM quantum educator and IBM Kiskit advocate, and he's actively building the quantum community in India. Um, he's an IBM certified associate developer um, doing compu quantum computation using Qiskit. And he has 12 years of experience in research and development, as well as lecturing at the university level. Um, he's an active senior member of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the IEEE, and is participating in their quantum standards committee. So please, without further ado, let's give it up with a virtual applause to our first speaker, uh, Jaya Kumar. Okay, thank you all. Am I audible? You can share your screen. Yep. Yep. Is it visible? Yes. Okay, fine. So I welcome you all for this uh, introduction course, Introduction to Quantum Computing. We're going to discuss today's session. So I use this material for this slide from uh, Ms. Gitanjali Venkatraman, who working as a technology writer and illustrator at ThoughtWorks. So normally as we discussed, what is a quantum computer? So this question will arise in our minds. So consider if device is going to talk with each other, uh, whether it is a uh, what is a quantum computer? Is it a computer built using a quantum physics, right? So they are all uh, are computer built on a normal physics, but how quantum is anyhow different from each other? So it becomes a very long story. We're going to discuss in very shortened form, right? So one more question we will ask whether these quantum computers are clever than all of us or how much faster than us. So the word, the idea, it can do a trillion thoughts at a single time. So this is the key point. So this is so powerful, exceptionally good when compared to the normal and classical computers. So it lives in the coldest climes. So it, it is both fragile and sharp, okay? And it has the capability of solving the hardest of problems. So we have a lot of problems. Whether we have the hardest problem, it can be able to solve that one, right? So ultimately, is it better at playing music, shopping, uh, telling the way, uh, making a graph? Normally, whatever we do, everyday stuff, of course, but it is not built for that purpose. This is beyond that purpose, right? So ultimately, does it exist? Yes, but the question is not it. Right. So do we, know, uh, do we need a real quantum computers? So far, not so much needed, but it may be inevitable especially in lights of these questions, we have to think about it, right? So how long will Moore's laws hold? And we can solve all problems given enough, uh, enough computing power. Also quantum computers are not intended as a replacement to the one we now use. So we need to consider quantum computers are not replace the existing computer. So this point, we're going to stick in our mind very carefully. Right? So we will deal one by one. So what is the meaning of Moore's law and uh, how it going to ends, right? We have to discuss this law because this is the primary factor to build a quantum computer, which is the necessity of uh, ending up a classical one, right? The last stage uh, in 1965 uh, proposed by Jordan Moore, we can accept the speed of computers to double every two years or so. 
so this is the basic principle where the company are going to push around the computational speed but the processor are becoming uh, cheaper and cheaper and smaller and smaller uh, even a single chip can contains about a billion transistor so this is the logic so every two years we try to make the chip cheaper and smaller and we going to embed a billions of transistor in it so this make this law as a uh, true so what are the difficulty we going to face uh, look at this diagram here this is the transistor okay so transistor is very simplest processor so consider it is like a switch it it will let the electron to flow or not so by the by that way you can control in on state or off state okay so normally the size of your uh, transistor existing approximately to 10 nanometer so which is very smaller than a human hair right so whenever we are doing uh, this process the chip become cheaper and smaller so after some point of time after some the transistor uh, transistor size gets smaller and this the size limit applies right at a certain point of time we going to face quantum errors we going to face quantum effects which will come into play here what happens quantum tunneling will make electrons to jump and flow even when the switch is off so if you consider this example this is binary state so this is on and this is off whenever the size become smaller and smaller quantum uh, tunneling will happen so this become uncertain because it will jump from on to off or off to on right so what is quantum we can discuss a yeah, preliminary definition from these words so quantus is uh, a latin word to describe how great it is right so from that the quantum is derived which is a smallest piece of energy you can define like this so you can try to relate a quantum mechanics which describe nature at the tiniest scale so whatever we are doing whatever we are observing we are doing at classical level macro level but this quantum is the smallest piece of energy and smallest uh, tiny particles so we we going to deal with quantum mechanics right the notion of quantum came at a time when the phenomena in the macro classical world and had been well explained by mathematical formula so we are able to understand in better way using mathematical formula let's uh, uh, review about our normal classical world what we know so far then we can easily able to relate what is a quantum and what a quantum world will look like right so as we know newton laid out a deterministic picture of our world so his mathematics described and predicted in exactly what we are looking at right the acceleration the inertia right the velocity momentum the action and reaction right the planetary motion so whatever we are able to see we are able to uh, describe it so this makes predictable uh, clark world view of the whole universe and soon this going to change when we look at the quantum level all right so this is what classical world look so we can observe we can able to recognize we are able to reason each and everything with our naked eyes so quantum and classical are worlds apart so totally they are different uh initially if we going to observe they seems to operate on different laws and behave uh, entirely different right 
so this makes a little bit uh, tough to understand the quantum world or quantum perspective so how do we begin to understand or compare these two extreme worlds right this is the challenge we going to face in order to understand in a better way right so a good place to start is to look at particles and waves so whatever we studied at our schooling level so we going to refresh and re recall those concepts right so this is the very simplest experiment we going to look so what waves do and what particles do we going to explain with the uh, uh, simple experiment right when you fill a bucket with sand and uh, find a plate with two holes when you started to pour that hand on the plates so what makes it will make two distinct piles of your sand right so this experiment and this observation make uh, the particle nature of this sand right so if you do a different for waves so fill a bucket with water and find a board with two gaps and a ripple from one side travels past both gaps and makes peaks and valleys so you can find these ripples you can find this interference pattern so it appears like a wave so this is the duality so whatever experiment you going to choose whatever you going to observe according to that it will reveal right so this is very unexpected result so according to your observation the result going to get change so we have to look a subatomic world because we are looking at quantum level right the greek gave us the world for atom so take an example of it all right so this is our first peek into the quantum world we can observe a lot of subatomic particle electron neutron nucleus proton ions so this makes subatomic world which is the basic for quantum right so whatever we going to study the nature about the quantum particles okay we going to uh, describe their behavior as quantumness so entanglement uh, this is the very basic concept in order to under understand the quantum uh, nature right we can go with an example so look at this diagram so we have uh, two particles right we have to set in the right condition to either it could be two electrons or two photons which can be entangled together okay entangle is is like a arrangement or understanding between two particles together right so in same way we can describe so if you make a, a arrangement uh, a entanglement between two particles if you put a yeah, one particle aside and if you keep the another particle away from that it means the properties of the two particles are related even if the property uh, particles are separated so you can observe these things right so one particle at one end of your space and another particle at another end of your space if you are able to relate in such a way right it will remain same right suppose if you are playing a rock paper scissors game at one end of your world uh, by measuring one instantly decides the state of the other so this is very different right this is very different from the classical world of uh, point and uh, this measurement reveal the state of other exactly right so we have to look this slide very carefully okay so the entanglement we need to set right conditions about two electrons or two photons to be entangled together it makes some sense right so the way behavior of one particle will simultaneously affect 
the another particle even though it is separated apart from the galaxy to galaxy so if you try to measure one particle you will get some result and this result you can observe from another particle also is it clear i think so so entanglement is very important property in quantum so by by knowing one particle simultaneously we going to know about the state of another particle right so what we can learn from this entanglement it will influence each other state even if they are galaxies apart okay so we can revise in uh, a, another view right if you are able to measure one you are able to match the same result with another particle so right so what is good by using a quantum mechanics why we going to study and why we going to use this technology for our own benefit right so quantum mechanics is responsible for developing these applications for creating lasers right to creating nuclear reactions atom bombs nuclear fusion right even for transistor we can make a better transistor right we can create a very accurate medical devices when we are dealing with quantum level so the results are so good the accuracy is so good right so there are n number of application if you are playing at quantum level right so we can have a small glimpse about what is a quantum computer made up of so quantum computer is uh, uh, going to use quantum particle so which is the basic fundamental thing in order to use right so these quantum particles we going to call as a qubit so qubit here stand as a quantum bit so whatever we are doing at classical level we going to add some fashion to it quantum level right so what we going to use as a quantum bits so we can use electrons and photons uh, like a subatomic particles so we can use a n number of subatomic particles even we can use ions right so these uh, subatomic particle have some properties some actions like spinning and polarization so we going to choose uh, this action in order to describe your quantum bit values okay either it could be north to south or up to down uh, we can use this property to represent our data so the another important concept after entanglement is superposition right superposition is normally what we are studied in physics the uh, one state overlap with some other state so these two states are being in together and uh, the mixture of these things called superposition and after doing superposition we can do entanglement so this is the basic principle of uh, uh, quantum computer right so after doing all these things what we can do we can write quantum algorithms just like a classical algorithm right these algorithms are supported uh, using quantum logical gates and quantum particles so we going to develop a quantum logical gates whatever we are used at subatomic particles i hope uh, this give a better understanding about quantum computer right so why we are doing all this stuff why we are looking at quantum particles why we are avoiding the classical way in order to get computation speed exploring several options simultaneously so this speed up is exponential this speed up is something exponential
also while doing all these process using quantum algorithms so at the end we going to do a measurement so this measurement will fetch you a result so whatever you do at quantum level whenever you do measurement you can store this result in classical form using classical bit right so we saw three important properties one is uh, entanglement so we have to uh, make a relationship between two particles in such a way one will affect the another state instantly right after doing entanglement we have to apply quantum algorithms and we to do all these process right so after all these process computation we need to measure in order to get the result so this measurement will yield your result so this is slightly different from the classical perspective so that is why i re insist so why we go for quantum the another advantage your result is always yielded with a high probability and a high accuracy you can synonymously uh, use this word our results are so accurate uh, and uh, the speed is exponential these are the primary advantages of using quantum computer and quantum algorithms so for implementing this we need a specialized hardware right which will operate at very very cold temperatures right to slow down quantum particles manipulated by uh, microwave pulse in a superconducting quantum computer right so why we have to do all these things because we are uh, dealing with quantum particles which is uh, uh, constantly in motion so in order to slow down we need to operate at very very cold temperature absolute zero right and how we are doing this by using microwave pulses so this will help in order to operate your specialized hardware or we can use a multiple uh, technology so this is the one one of the example of uh, doing count quantum computation you can use laser beam in a trapped ion in order to build a quantum computer so ultimately quantum computer could be built using multiple technology it is not limited to a single technology not just like a classical we are using the same architecture for 60 and 70 years but in quantum version you can Uh, create multiple type of architecture it is not only limited to electrons and photons even you can use ions also so this is the beauty and benefit of building quantum computer right and um, another important basic concept we have to explore is about decoherence okay so decoherence is very hard to keep your quantum state so we will look what is a decoherence right if you have a quantum computer which consists of a cryogenic uh, engine a kind of uh, facility so a quantum system has to be isolated from its surrounding to keep quantum behavior so it is very different from a typical classical computer we need to protect the system uh, in very isolated uh, surrounding so even a smallest pressure applied a stray particle so we we need to keep a clean room practice clean room practice for our uh, facility right with the zero zero tolerance even a smallest uh, uh, slight deviation in temperature will affect your quantum state right a smallest vibration or uh, interference of electromagnetic fields so all these tiny uh, nano level uh, uh, disturbance will collapse your quantum state so we should be very careful in dealing with quantum states 
so what happens so this will make your quantum state in order to collapse quantum state in order to collapse once we lost quantum state we going to lose our information so that is the key thing we have to notice right so already we discussed about entanglement and superposition consider it is a state and this is always just uh, followed by decoherence so decoherence will make your quantum state to collapse so until you keep your entanglement superposition you can do all this computation so there is always a race between these two uh, functions right so before decoherence catches your entanglement and superposition state you need to you need to complete your measurement process okay so we have to make sure we have to make sure we have to do measurement in order to get your result before this decoherent happens okay and this is very very expensive process this is very expensive process and there is a lot of r and d are going on on this uh, especially this topic so how to make your system more stable right and any exposure to noise leads to loss of this quantumness so this is what we are uh, trying to cover right so until there is no quantumness we are not able to do all these process right so next we going to cover the fundamental block or building block for a quantum computer called quantum bits as we already discussed in earlier slides right so this will keep your information right quantum bits will keep your information so what is a bit and what is a qubit we have to do a little uh, analysis a bit is a binary digit is only one of the two states it will exist like either 0 or 1 so this is very discrete this is very clear so you can find enough level this is level 0 and this is level uh, 1 you can find only two states okay and you can exactly state which state it uh, exists right but if you take uh, example of qubit qubit in a superposition state of psi okay zero to some extent and one to some other extent so it makes you confusing at initial stage so observe this image right so at the same time state 0 will exist and state 1 exist and mixture of this you can say it is a psi okay so this psi is superposition mixture of both 0 and 1 simultaneously at the same time So if you apply two qubits, two quantum uh, bits, we will get four possible states with the certain likelihood. Okay. When you extend, when you add one more quantum bit to it, so it will lead to eight quantum states, eight possible states. So I hope this gave you a rough idea about the quantum bits. So I can extend something further. So this is a zero state. And this is state one, one state, you can say like this. And in between, this is superposition state. So this is both zero as well as one. So one qubit could represent two states two information at the same time right 
adding one more qubit doubles the number of possible state which is entirely different from the classical point of view okay this property makes your quantum computer uh, more eligible to solve a complex problem with short short on time right so this increases exponential so stick to your mind so this property alone makes quantum computer something distinguishable so adding one more bit four states so keep on adding uh, one more qubit the states increasing at exponential rate so this is not possible in uh, classical point okay just with the uh, uh, 50 qubits you are able to achieve one after 15 o states one after 15 o states which is uh, phenomenal which is uh, tremendous right right we are going to look about uh, the basic geometric p of a qubit exactly like this right so as we discussed about uh, zero state and one state so whenever you get uh, the zero state it is in pure in nature pure state and one state also you can consider like a pure state okay so in between it is superposition or mixture of state so mathematically how we going to describe a, a qubit with the help of this size symbol right so we can call this uh, a structure this sphere as the block sphere okay normally they going to call it as a block sphere in order to represent quantum states qubits exists related to two basic states so as we already discussed either zero state or one state right so what is the meaning of these two states so as we compare to the classical one zero represents the ground state or you can simultaneously say a down state right one you can represent in a excited state or it could be the up state and uh, the size state it is in both form actually the size state is a quantum state mixture of both zeros and ones so normally they are using a special symbol for representing these from the classical point they call bar plus uh, k they call bar k bracket okay so this symbol is the notation to represent your quantum state so this is a different view of the same qubit in the superposition right so if you exactly uh, divide the angle in 45 degree you will get a equal probable state equal probable state where 50% belongs to zero and 50% belongs to one okay so with this analogy you can uh, calculate psi 2 is more and more towards one so it have higher probability of uh, being one consider a uh, 60% of 1 and 40% uh, of 0 right so try to put this analogy so psi 1 is in equal superposition right so a qubit state you can say it is a superposition of both 0 and 1 together at simultaneously and is not both Zero and one also, right? 
so this is the another representation of uh, uh, how uh, how relevant this zero and one belongs to okay what is the probability of being zero and one we going to measure this signal alpha and beta right attached to your uh, zero and one state where alpha and beta are complex numbers it means uh, they are amplitude signal amplitudes or you can say those are pre probabilities right so equal to proportion so how will you describe psi 1 by using this formula so 1 over root 2 of zero state plus 1 over root 2 of 1 which will yield your superposition so this is very important formula in order to understand right for psi 1 it is equal okay for psi 2 this will differ according to your probability if it is near to 1 then the value of this beta is somewhat high right and value of this uh, alpha is somewhat low in case of psi 2 right suppose if you are uh, having state 3 then you can easily imagine okay so the value of alpha is is and value of uh, uh, beta for psi 3 is somewhat low this is the geographical representation of alpha and beta you can try to relate with previous slides okay so the amplitude is the signal strength uh, which uh, represents the state which belongs to more and more zero and more and more to one right so as we already discussed the measurement i mean a qubit is measured its superposition collapse and it will settle down either to zero state or either to one state so you should uh, remember when you do measurement you going to collapse quantum state you going to collapse quantum state so this will yield your result concrete either zero or one just like classical so quantumness exist until measurement when you measure it will come to a conclusion either to zero or one state just like classical right so how will you uh, estimate the outcomes or the result by using this formula right you need to square the value of uh, alpha and you need to square the value of uh, beta in order to get the probability of zero probability of one and if you are adding together it will always always the result for an example alpha square if it is uh, 0.7 for uh, beta it is b when you add it up it will always yield one so this is yeah, example i can throw at you right so this is the analogy you can put and put so in superposition if you want to identify the state you need to add alpha of 0 plus beta of 1 which will yield superposition of a qubit value right i hope i give a, a glimpse of Uh, uh basic and fundamental blocks of quantum computing so you can able to now define what is a qubit what is the entanglement what is the superposition and how to represent qubit right so we can see uh, a contribution of women in quantum computing 
it is a honor for me to introduce uh, some of them And these are all the references where this material is uh, um, compiled. So you can go through it. Thank you so much, Jay Kumar, and um, for the references that he put. Um, at, at the end of his presentation, we will share all of those in our document with all of the links and things um, for all presentations at the end of the webinar. Oops. Okay. So now, if you have any questions for Jack Kumar, now is the time to put them in the question and answer box. So please put any questions you have. I'm sure Jay Kumar will um, be happy to answer anything. Um, so while we uh, wait for some questions to come into the chat, I just wanted to ask, um, Jay Kumar, you went into a lot of depth about the quantum properties um, from entanglement to superposition. Which property do you think has the most potential to be harnessed in newly developed technologies? Could you like rank the properties somehow? Right. So there are uh, some special properties like uh, superposition and entanglement. So when we are talking about superposition, we try to uh, embed one over uh, another. So it makes a, a special uh, uh, property for you in order to represent two states, multiple states together at simultaneously. So which is uh, possible at classical point, but uh, when you compare to quantum, it leverages the power. At the same time, you can represent zero as well as one. So it gives uh, a potential for you to do more computations. So at, as well as the entanglement, if you make a particle to behave uh, together simultaneously, just like cloning, right? Cloning in every aspect. So whatever happens to one particle, same way it will happen to another particle. So this nature we cannot describe because which is very spooky in nature. So that is why quantum computing or quantum mechanics will confuse people, okay? This makes so special. So if you are not able to understand, just we have to use it. So this property make uh, to do some task at one point and simultaneously will get the exact result. So yeah, for the beginners, for beginners, it is confusing. It will it will easily get confused because we are not observed it. Whatever we observe with our naked eyes, then then only we are going to believe it. So this property very difficult to understand. Yeah, and as you mentioned that. Entanglement is very spooky. Um, Einstein, when he was 
um, looking into this, he called it spooky at a distance. So, yep, yes. Yep. Um, we had a question from someone about superposition. They asked, is the superposition a property of the quantum field or the quantum spin? Superposition is the property of quantum field or quantum spin? So superposition you can observe in multiple ways in classical view also. So one over the another. So multiple ways you can look at it. Uh, for an example, if you are uh, spinning a co uh, coin, uh, tossing a coin, so what happens? The both tail and uh, head spin together. So the position of, uh, you cannot say what is the position because it is in superposition, one over other. Until you make a measurement, until you stop that coin, it is in superposition. Superposition you can put for any, uh, any concept. So tossing a coin is an, just an example, right? Any other question? Um, someone else asked, how do we know there is decoherence in results? Okay. So decoherence is nothing. When you make uh, uh, subatomic particles to represent some values, you need to keep at very, very cold temperature, right? Within a fraction of seconds, it will lose its property. If any minute disturbance happens, it will collapse that quantum state. Right. So decoherence is nothing. So how long it will retain its quantum state? That is the meaning of decoherence. So if it happens soon, the decoherence happens at very fast rate. If you are able to retain that quantum state, it means there is very low decoherence rate. Okay, so essentially, if you have a like a result, there is little decoherence. If you have no results, yes. there is yes. all decoherence. So, so we need we are concentrating on we are uh, we need to do measurement before it collapse. That is the key point. So we are making our data in quantum state. Okay, before it collapse, we need to make measurements. Once we we make measurements, the quantumness will get destroyed and you will get result. But before that, you need to make it in quantum state. Mm -hmm. And then um, someone else asked, um, I'm not really sure about this question. Can the arrows in the coordinate systems be treated as complex numbers? Exactly, you can uh, deal it. Because uh, we are dealing with both real and complex number in order to represent any value in quantum space. Definitely, you can consider uh, thank you. Um, and then another question, how do we make a career in this field? I think they're referring to um, quantum. Great. So this is very, very open-ended question. Uh, anybody from any field can make career in this field. So it is up to you. Okay. The field is very, very new. Uh, it is getting booming. If you know a little bit of knowledge about it, if you are able to create the curiosity uh, from your end, there are ample of opportunity. People are looking for you. Whatever you, uh, domain you belongs to you, you are most welcome to this uh, uh, career. Thank you. Um, and we have another question. Um, in quantum, are there any similar similarities with DNA computers? like? GTCA instead of zero and one bits. Exactly. So you can you can create a uh, quantum computing using multiple technology, multiple thought process. Not only using the superconductor, you can use the uh, trapped ions. You can use uh, liquids also, right? You can use uh, the chemical computer. So there are a lot of possibility. So wherever you can observe this phenomena, quantum phenomena in nature, you can use those particles to compute your uh, task. So it is only our imagination. So whatever uh, way we are able to harness our uh, quantum uh, subatomic particles, we can use that as a quantum system. Even my answer is very vague because I'm not able to express in right way. 
multiple possibility not only the electronic even you can use liquids to generate computation just like our brains just like our neurons yeah and if um any of the attendees have been following um the girls on quantum instagram we've been doing a series called quantum computers around the world and if you see there there are so many different types of quantum computers from um quantum annealing to superconducting to um phot photonic computers like there are so many and as jay kumar said uh, it's just the only limit is your imagination um i have a question so you serve as a quantum educator you're actively getting people into the field do you think there's any certain kind of resource or learning pathway that's missing in the quantum space right now or do you think we have all our bases covered all right so i am uh, handling for uh, undergraduate engineering students so for me it is very easy to enable them because they have some basic knowledge uh, in the case of maths and physics but school level uh, there are so many difficulties because uh, the people are very new to this technology and it is very confusing because of its nature okay even the lecturers and teachers are not able to understand at first point so they need some time they they need to go digest the, those concepts so it is a very tricky and challenging part but the same way go for a, a school student they can learn easy when compared to uh, the graduate students because they are very new okay their uh, their thoughts are very blank they can easily adapt these concept when compared to the grown ups so this is the added advantage and a lot of resources are available qubit by qubit right uh, and uh, ibm quantum have a very big uh, uh, resource center for this so i suggest uh, students to take qubit by qubit uh, certificate they are starting at very very basic level so i i am being mentor for uh, three schools and 30 students participated in this course so the course will go for two semesters for eight months uh, students are easily able to catch these concepts they are able to write code they are able to uh, learn python they are able to do marvelous things so there are various resources but i suggest qubit by qubit is very good platform for any beginners um and i would like to add the um course he's talking about the qubit by qubit introduction to quantum computing elisa yes. and i actually took that last year and that's yeah. how we yeah. got started in um, yeah. the quantum space and a link to registering for that i believe they still have registration open um will be in our list of resources so if any of the attendees do want to check out that course um i know i highly recommend it i learned so much um elisa did you want to talk a little bit about it yeah of course well um well i i remember that time it was uh i believe september 2021 and i look at this advertisement of the qubit by qubit um school and i take that and it was like quantum computing and i was like what is quantum computing uh but after that i realized that this was an emerging technology and i was totally fascinated by the technology and well uh then i met savina and i met another amazing students um and well then i found a piercing quantum so i can definitely say that it's a great course to understand some basics about quantum computing to have fun with uh, with other people around the world that have the same age as you so yeah i totally recommend it yeah and as elisa mentioned um like that's how she and i connected like at the very end of the course she put in the chat like oh hey i'm starting this organization like girls in quantum if you want to join like you know contact me and i contacted her and like that's how this started and that's why we're able to um host such an amazing webinar with speakers like jay kumar Um I think we have one last question. Um what piqued your interest or drove you to pursue this field? Great question. So before uh, one year I don't know about quantum computer by chance I get to know about this field 
and uh, uh, there is a small video from google uh, they uh, they they emphasize that they took a toy problem and uh, a super computer in uh, a super potential computer in uh, google it will take 10000 years to compute that problem the same problem they put in a quantum computer which will result within 200 seconds so it gives you a uh, mind blowing effect in my uh, brain uh, i never know about this technology being a computer engineer for 20 years this is very strange thing for me which excited me and i started to learn uh, learn about quantum computer very exciting if you have very curious mind if you want very very challenging environment this is the right platform for you and, yeah, and this won't settle down it it is a lifelong learning right mm-hmm. and i believe you're talking about um google um claiming that they achieved quantum yes, advantage quantum supremacy yes yeah. they claimed mm-hmm. i yeah. i have one question <laughs> uh, as well um it was more about what have been like the the main challenges for you during all this quantum computing journey uh since yeah i think that it could be really significant to know your opinion right uh, you need to observe the people around you uh, you need to observe people from a professional network like linkedin uh, which gives a lot of insights how people started to learn uh, and you need to read uh, quizkit blogs Uh, i forgot that name what what is the famous block for the platform mm-hmm. uh, we oh. have a one more question like questions just keep coming um yes 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 someone asked what is the like the best source to dive deeply into quantum computing is reading textbooks good or reading uh, papers uh it depends upon the person level so if they are uh, very new they need to start with videos okay if they are experts after uh, uh, completing their schools they can go for blogs they can read papers they can read journals so it is appropriate according to their age if they are at school level better they have to start with interesting interactive videos it will make them tune in this uh, field and also it is like a quick send the person can last uh, in this quantum computing journey only few people will stick to this uh, uh, field after some interesting things uh, some people will uh, lost their interest because of the complexity background complexity involved they need to understand how to approach rightly so that is why we need to follow people uh, we need to read their story how they approached it will help to better understand how to proceed right and we will actually be hearing about some uh one speaker's quantum computing journey a little bit later today so thank you for bringing that up like it's very great, important great. to like look at other people and their examples um and then go from there so you don't get lost as you said um are there any other questions okay um can you suggest some project topics for this field so projects are plenty uh, uh so can you specify at what what level you want for the um rosh for the attendee who asked could you specify what kind of projects okay pg level uh, you can uh, search around uh, hackathon right there are so many topics discussed uh, you can go for uh, ibm quizkit challenges you can find lot of open ended question so after each hackathon they will post that question as well as with the answer you can find a lot of insights over it so what they do they will focus most in interesting topic and most challenging thing okay they will uh, post question as well as tutorial as well as the solution 
if you go and work around it you will have a fair idea about it so this is how they are doing okay project idea you can get multiple so it is not limited to your domain it is highly interdisciplinary so whatever your field you can get uh, any relevant project uh, idea or topic this is not difficult and i'd like to add um it will be linked in our quantum resources document that I will send out. But there is the Kiskit textbook, and they have a lot of little projects, um, programming challenges that you can do. So if you like have no idea what you want to do, but you just want to do something in the quantum field, I recommend checking out, um, like Jay Kumar said, a tutorial to see um, to explore something there, or go into like a Kiskit textbook and look at the challenges they have there. And um, let me share, uh, Elisa wanted to share this link with you guys. Sorry, let me share it. There you go. Okay. So, Sorry, you share? Yeah, I, I just wanted to share those links. Uh, well, in the IBM uh, website, you can check uh, a real quantum computing. You can send some, some things you can try. So that's really good uh, if you want to get involved a little bit. And also, like I, I sent the, the Kiskit textbook so you can learn more about quantum computing and, yeah, some basic concepts. There you go. Those are in the chat if you'd like to check those out. And of course, there'll be a long list of resources um, in our resource guide. Um, so thank you so much, Jay Kumar, for um, such a great comprehensive overview of quantum computing. Um, like, thank you. I, it was really like, I know Elisa and I like have some experience with quantum, but like this was like a really good refresher. And there were some things in there that I definitely like just needed, just click. I just, thank you so much. Exactly. Um, thank you all. Thank you all for inviting. And it is very difficult to explain within half an hour. I touched up uh, whatever possible way. Thank yeah. you all. It was such a, a great presentation. Thank you so much for uh, being here today. I think that many people here um, can learn about quantum computing, get interested. Uh, and yeah, and afterwards, uh, afterwards, we're going to share this uh, presentation with everyone on YouTube uh, if they miss something. So yeah, thank you really much for this.